So this is my favorite, favorite part of meeting and talking to people and it's seeing the actual product. And I wanted to start with this one because this is the backpack that sort of turned me on to mix with leather. Um, first, the look. It's just a really stunning backpack. You're not the first person to do a leather backpack, but you're the first person that sort of like um, caught my eye with this sort of look. Mm -hmm. um, the flap and then you tuck it through and just the slight contrast in the leather. Um, this bag has a ton of features. I know you ladies are so crazy about the top grab handle, so it definitely has that. Um, but it's convertible, and so I wanted to give Steven the opportunity, so I don't miss anything, to talk about, not just aesthetically this bag is yeah. amazing, ridiculous, but what also does it have that features that nobody else does? The first feature I really like, to, uh, really like is just this tuck flap. And it's really hard to find a backpack that is super simple. Right. And I really just wanted to keep it super simple, sexy looking, where it's like one big panel of leather. I, I'm a huge fan of trying to make a, a bag out of one piece of leather. It's sturdier. You know, it's sturdier. It's cleaner looking. Just cleaner lines. And I wanted, you know, a throwback look, but with also a modern kind of appeal towards the lines and size. You know, you could fit a laptop pretty easily up and down this direction. But the main feature is that it has a piece of bridal leather that goes across here. And I think that's where we achieve that look. Mm -hmm. But also it's going to last a really long time. Um, so this, this, this flap tucks. Okay, when you untuck it and you sort of look inside, this actually has like a bucket bag style uh, cinch. And so what happens is the, the cord actually goes through there and that closes the mouth of it with the weight of the, of the bag itself. So obviously when you have more stuff in here, um, it's going to pull the bag down and that shuts the mouth of the bag with the straps. So, so it's self-cinching it, essentially. It's self-cinching, yeah. Um, the cool thing about that is this double usage is that when you pull this strap, it converts just to like a side satchel bag. So, so you can see it on camera, I'll hold it all the way up. So now the, the strap is fully all the way out and you just tuck this flap back through and you can just use it as a side bag or a crossbody. And you don't have to like so now I just, undo I've got a crossbody it, bag. none of that, no. right? It's no, just you just literally pull the strap that way. And so now you've gone from like, say on your bike, backpacking or you know, riding your bike or whatever with the backpack on, you can have a side bag for shopping. Now you have all your wallet and everything in front of you. This so, bag, that, I'm telling you, this bag is so... It was so... really hard to figure out. I had to build like 12 of them just to get it right and the proportions right. So it's in between, you know, a big hiking backpack, um, you know, and the little tiny backpacks you see when yeah. people go out. It's really that the day pack size. So the original name of this was the convertible day pack. However, that wasn't, it was a little confusing and people had a hard time finding it with that name. So it's referred to as the leather backpack on our site. But really it has two functions. It, right. You know, you've got this front satchel or side satchel as well. So. And you'll custom do anything, right? In terms of the straps, like if somebody's like, I'm really tall, I want it longer, or I'm yeah, really short and I want them smaller. We have different bodies, you know, sizes. Obviously we have people in here that are super tall, super short, so we have to adjust for, the, for those situations. This one has a tie. Sometimes we, we will just rivet these permanent. Oh, okay. Because when someone comes in, you can see exactly how tall they are and you can make one fixed strap and that's totally fine. Uh, but they ship with the tie strap so you can also adjust it in length. So, but yeah, we're, we're always down for, you know, putting the buckle on something, you know, making something a little more adjustable for different body types. And what's inside? Is there a pocket? So inside we've got two pockets, actually. A pretty much standard. You know, when I first started designing, I said, you know, I'm going to start a brand and there's never going to be a bag without a pocket. This is the rule of Mick Smith. And one God reason, bless them, because we were always complaining uh, when bags don't have enough pockets. Well, like you know, in a lot of relationships, friends and girlfriends or whoever, uh, we would always be searching for keys, and it's like, what is going on? Keys are at the bottom of a bag somewhere. And, and you're they, fishing. They call it like the leather bog, or whatever. It's like <laughs> in Star Wars, where there's like the trash chute, and there's just like a bunch of stuff in there. So that's the bottom of the bag, and you just really shouldn't be dealing with that. So you'll find that a lot of our bags actually have D rings up near the handles, they have pockets in places so you can connect your keys, you can oh, nice. tuck things into the pocket, and uh, you, I don't know if we can show you if you can see any of this, but there's two pockets right up top. So, so the first thing connected. you see is the pocket, yeah. And you are they open the pockets? Pocket. I'm like pocket crazy, so. Open pockets, yeah. Okay. So you can just kind of slide things right in. So it's like yep. a, and it's back up against the thing and it's an open pocket and then a pocket in front of it. Right. So it's like a dual pocket up against the back. And when people come in, we've, we've added pockets to things. We've added, you know, sleeves in the back for a water bottle, that type of thing. All this, you know, discussed in person, that type of stuff. Um, but this would make a really good diaper bag. You know, really good diaper bag, yeah. Adaptations, um, just looks a little nicer. So, and allows you to have hands free. So I thought this was my favorite of his bags. Um, 
because I've been in the store before, I've been online, uh, and I will still say this bag is like, it's really, really beautiful in person. It smells amazing. Um, but he had something in the store that he did not have before that's sort of a one of a kind that sort of jumped into first position. Um, and I want to talk about that bag. I'm going to. You want to grab it? I've already grabbed it. Sweet. I'm probably going to steal it. Um, <laughs> look at oh, this right. bag. It's so. Um, it's amazing. So, um, for so many reasons. One, because I've never seen a bag like it. Two, because. I think, and you can expand on it from a technical perspective, mm -hmm. but I see a lot of these sort of modern handles that are thin and firm, and they hurt a little bit when you go like this. Like on your right. arm, they dig in, but yours does not. Um, and then of course, just the shape of it, the openness, the size is sort of flawless for like an evening bag. He's got this vintage closure, um, and it's an open thing. I don't want to steal your thunder, but talk no, to me about I'm like, this bag is crazy. You're the only crazy. person that's really seen it, so it's, it's good for me to hear and get the, get the feedback. This is one of a kind piece, so. It's a, yeah, this bag yeah. is like, it's it's crazy beautiful. So, um, what, like, how did this bag come about? Are you making more? It's currently one of a kind, but it's, yeah. holy, this bag is really nice in person. I've made two other sort of prototypes, and, and those were also purchased. Um, this is probably the highest form of it. Like, I feel like it's very complete. Um, it's funny where inspiration comes from. Like I, I was just sort of doing sketches, and I was actually in Hong Kong about 12 years ago. And it's uh, there's something called the Wan Bao, which is like the first currency that was used. And I have a feeling it's from trade on okay. boats because the the um, Wan Bao is like boat shaped currency, and typically you'll you'll receive one as a gift when you're a guest somewhere for good luck, good fortune, um, as a token. And it's a piece of jade, and it's in a boat shape, just like this. Mm -hmm. And I've always done that sketch. I always thought that that shape was really neat. Um, so when I designed the handbag, I thought, oh, that would be really cool, as like if that was a bag and not a little boat. You know, boat right. you put things in. And I don't know, I just thought that that would be the inspiration. Um, and then I also like vintage hardware. Uh, I worked with my dad in a restoration shop growing up, and we've always kept really nice vintage hardware. Uh, I believe this one came off of a Gucci bag. There's no names printed on it or anything like this, and it was never even used on a bag. It was a piece of hardware that we we ordered for uh, replacement. Um, so it's never been used. Um, and I just thought it looked so beautiful. It would be a nice centerpiece um, for this one-of-a-kind bag. It's more like an art piece. It is an it art really piece. Is. And, and it's uh, also super functional because you just, it's like, functional. it's a really easy turn. You just do this, and the bag's open. Yeah, it's got a nice weight to it. Yep. And it's going to be in a fashion show tomorrow. Um, so there was a lot of pressure for me to finish it up, which is good for me <laughs> yeah. to have deadlines. Uh, but it was something I've been incubating for a while, almost almost a year, I think. Drawing the sketches and you know making the template and then finally getting to the finished piece. Uh, so what you see in the handle is actually two layers of leather hand cut and then sewn around and finished into one strap that holds the whole thing together like a tiny bucket. Mm -hmm. so, How yeah. do people make it like this leather super stiff? Is there something in there that makes because it like harder than this? This is a vegetable tan leather. Okay. And I think it's just part of the tanning process. Like it just like comes it, out it's, super it's, stiff. It's more firm. Okay. Yeah. I think what it is is that that's how most leather is. It's super stiff. It's softened later. Right. To get it's treated. To achieve the other one by tumbling and oils and that type of thing. Whereas this is just not. It's more of a dry process. Got it. Right? So this is like more the sort of virginish leather before, and then it, it gets is. treated, and then as it yeah. gets treated, it gets softer. It isn't dyed and that, that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's very firm. But also there's two layers so that adds to the firmness. Right? Okay, right, yeah. yeah. And if somebody wanted to buy this beauty and send it to me, how much would it cost? <laughs> I'm guessing it's around $500. Something this like bag, that. A bag, guys, handbag. This I feel like that's a pretty going, a good going rate. This bag so. is so beautiful. I walked in the store and I was just like, I saw this thing right away. It just sort of sings like the heavens opened up and the light shone yeah. down upon it. This thing is insane in person. Um, so those are sort of two of your like hallmark pieces that are really beautiful. But I want to talk also. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to basics. Sure. Right. So you do totes. You do totes. You do totes. You make yeah. them small, medium, large. What else can you do? If somebody's like, hey, I want a tote, but I want, what might they ask you? A lot of people ask for pockets. They okay. ask for zippers. They have, they ask for. Um, a little bit more hardware, so it locks this together. If they don't want zippers, maybe they want some type of enclosure. Um, that was, those are the first right, uh, things right away. The other would be like a, a strap adaptations. So we can make this tote bag a lot shorter. Okay. Uh, so it's handle, more like right? A, so it's like a carry handle. breed, yep. right? So that's sometimes not enough. We do that plus one long crossbody strap. Okay. So now you've got like this hybrid tote briefcase thing. 
and then we put an enclosure. And is this right, your small? So this is the, this is what we call the medium. This is the medium. But this okay. is the smallest this shape. Yes, and then we have the long toe. Okay. Okay. And this one you're, you're looking at has Latigo handles and is made of Nubuck. So this is, not that it's one of a kind, I think I've made six of them, but it's more unique. We don't have it on the website. You can call in and, and ask for it over the phone, but it's something that, it's kind of one of the perks of coming into the shop. As you see these more unique pieces from leather, I was like, oh man, I have to have that. Yeah. You know, at the hide house. And so I come back and just make a few totes and, you know, I've been trying to work with gray. I really like gray and I love this, this Nubuck. Like how it has, and you know, when you touch it, it kind of has this directional sort of light and dark thing going on. It feels um, like suede. It feels like suede. It's a little bit more durable. It doesn't have as much of the nap like suede does, so it's not going to hold on to a lot of dirt. Um, and it has just a more kind of silky look than mm -hmm. suede. And I think that's why I like Nubuck. It's also more firm, so it keeps its shape like a bucket, right? Yep. Um, suede might collapse and just sort of fall, <laughs> so it wouldn't keep its shape. So I thought that was kind of neat to work within, you know, uh, to work on this uh, new box. On, on and for some reason, it's hard to find this gray, which is why I picked this one out because I know a lot mm -hmm. of people on the Facebook groups are sort of crazy about this color. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I, I yeah. showcased it because it is hard to find stuff in this color. Yes. Um, so let me put that to the side. That's sort of like a, a more basic tote. Yeah, that's where and we then, started. The, the tote bag was the first piece we ever designed. So this is sort of the other end, the not so basic tote. Um, and this is relatively new for you on your website, right? This yeah. sort of decked out tote. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about what you change in, in is, terms of the features. Sure, this is like the uh, tote deluxe, right? Right. And, and of course we wanted to add all these features early on, but I, we didn't necessarily have the customer base for a very large, for a very expensive bag. I don't think they're expensive necessarily, but the price point is closer to 300 to 500, depending on which, chop, which options you choose. Um, we use the same nice Latigo handles, which are soft. Um, and then basically I order uh, Riri zippers, which are very high quality European yep. imported zippers. So I guess that was one thing that we, that's not domestic US. But <laughs> we'll forgive you <laughs> that small transgression, really, <laughs> right? It's <laughs> these, a nice zipper. I just always really liked these zippers. The brass is, is solid and it's really, I don't know if you can hear this, I'll put it close to the microphone. But it just rolls like butter, mm -hmm. you know? And it, it's important that it has a nice sheen as well. I think it looks more like jewelry. And then we make a little hand, a handmade tab for it. Um, very durable, very very clean zippers. Um, this happens to be the large tote. Okay. So you can fit a full size laptop across. That is one option that's not on this one. We can add a laptop sleeve, which th they sort of snaps it, you know, lock everything in. That's a pretty nice feature to add to this. It adds to the weight a little bit, but the thing is, it's very protective. Yes. Right. So, and it gives you like that separation within the bag. And you, so you also, have books and yeah. whatever as well. You also yeah. get the full use of the interior when mm -hmm. you do the sleeve because your laptop's not just floating in there. Right. And you know, I had talked about the other day how I get annoyed because women bags don't have laptop sleeves because yes. they assume no one's working. Yes, but the those the times have changed. And, times and have women changed. Are, you know, very um, very much so in the workplace and need bags like this, and so we've developed them um, with with women in mind, but also. These are the ideas that walked in my shop, and so we're just making things I know people need because mm -hmm. they ask for it, and that's how this this change happens. Um, also, the the two front pockets is the same way. You know, um, you don't even have to you know open uh, snap or anything like that. This is literally you throw your phone in there, that type of thing. It's very quick. It, your keys, that type of thing. Um, maybe a wine bottle. I don't maybe know. I don't know what's bottle. in your bag, but <laughs> that's totally possible. So. Uh, and we have actually te uh, uh, weight tested these and put wine bottles in them. We completely filled them and did like strength tests and so that the rivets um, also hold up. And what you'll see is that we have uh, leather washers in the back that actually help the, the rivets not tear out of the leather when there's a lot of weight in it. And it's not just the weight, but what if something pulls at it? Right. Right. And so we've done those types of, uh, we've never had them pull out. And I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but um, a lot of times what you'll see on bags is they'll just put the rivet up against this rough side out leather um and so he has the extra step of putting this leather washer here mm -hmm. um and so it's just that's makes this leather it's not cutting corners it's right. doing things the long way um this is a really 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 beautiful tote super functional he has it um with the the two pockets right so the single pocket and then the little pocket in front mm -hmm. um and then you can add the laptop sleeve this particular one happens to have is this brass this is heavy yes yeah, yeah so brass. he's got a um uh, a key fob here. Um, this is just a really yeah. Nice so bag. if you have keys you don't want to lose, maybe yep. it's a secondary key so you don't get locked out. You just leave it in there. It's not going to fall to the bottom. 
you know, that type of thing. So just trying to make, you know, have these little adaptations to it. Uh, some of the bags will have a D-ring on the front as well, so you can clip to it. Okay. So it's an option, it's not necessary. Um, I think the brown and the black one have one on right now. Um, sometimes people put like a decorative uh, little like a, like fringe tassel, you mm -hmm. know, on, on, on something like that or a scarf. So they just know what that, that bag is there, so yep. it's brighter, something like that. So this is sort of the hallmark of Makesmith, right? They have the unusual one-of-a-kind bags that hint husband that I would really like that one bag. And then I love the backpack, which is um, not the first leather backpack, but the first of that type that I've seen. Yeah. And then the customizable tote, which is sort of uh, how you got your start. Is there mm -hmm. anything else that you want sort of people to know about, like the heart of Makesmith leather? You're here in Santa Barbara. You're making these bags by hand. You're teaching the community. Yeah, I would say our customer service, you know, and that sounds like so cheesy, but the thing is we're responsible for these designs to be great. Mm -hmm. You know, and if they break, which things do happen, like we've had dogs bite through these handles, <laughs> you know, things you just, you're not going to see coming, right? Um, everything's modular. I can actually cut the zipper out and probably put a new one in. I can cut these handles off and just put new handles on. Or maybe you've had it for five years and you just want it refreshed with some new handles. You want to change the handle color. We can cut these off and just put new ones. So we're a hundred percent responsible for our goods, you know, having this, this long life and we guarantee our work. So no questions asked. If somebody comes in and needs a repair, we just do it and get it out as quick as we can. That's what I want people to know is that, you know, there, it's an investment, um, but it's, it's, it's exactly what it is. There's two parts to it and we're responsible for these goods. So, so that is Make Smith Leather. They're standing behind their products. They're standing behind their leather. They're teaching the community. Stop in and see you. You are at where? What's your address? 135 East De La Guerra in the Presidio District, which is a historical um, it's a park, actually. It's a, it's a state park. Yeah, and the architecture around here, if you're like an architecture buff, is like it's insane. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, this is this is small town. This is, I don't know. This is just, this was such a treat for me. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much to Steven. Yeah, you ask good questions. I appreciate <laughs> that. Yeah. like to keep you on your toes. Yes. This is their not-so-basic deluxe tote. Check him out. Is it Makesmith.com? Makesmith.com. Yep. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. It was fun. I'm glad you liked it. I hope I didn't keep you so long.